Yeah, welcome everybody to the community uh, meeting on May 3rd. So we have an agenda, a couple of items, looking forward to them. I would propose we go backwards in the agenda. If anybody has another topic, please add it. We come back to that. Um, I think we start with the first one, very pos positive one. We tagged zero dot four today, and I think I will give the voice to Paul if he's here. Yeah, I'm here. So awesome work. Um, I think it, it's a good time to just kind of step back and, and recognize some of the things that this group has done. And the first thing that I just wanted to mention is we had four new contributors. Stefan called them out in uh, our public channel there. Uh, and I'm not going to try and pronounce everyone's name, but thank you to the new folks that are contributing to the project. It, it's really awesome to see. So we've got a, a great big list of, of things that were merged, and I won't go through and read them all, but I just want to talk about we've had new items merged that help people uh, interact with the system a little better. We've had some feature gate flags, and we're starting to use them. Uh, tenancy API validations that are in there. Um, the location and placement API, first draft of that, has been merged. That's huge. Um, enabling validation and, and mutating webhooks is in there. Um, I haven't been at every community call, but I saw an awesome demo for proxying P cluster level commands like logs and execs down uh, for workloads. We had a, a really cool demo about syncing strategies and workspace resource transformations. And work was started in. in uh, 0.4 and has moved over to 0 0.5 for some of the advanced scheduling integrations as well. Um, big work on the sinker during this release, the removing the whole push mode of that. So that, that was a huge one. Um, Steve also documented all his performance and analysis on Cockroach. So that's been moving forward as well. And Maybe near and dear to my heart is how many stability and bug fixes went in there. EDE fixtures, contributions to our contributing and development guide, virtual workspace documentation. Um, there were quite a few CI CD pieces when I re reviewed them all, uh, which is awesome to see. And we still have time for process. We made some new agreements on how we're going to. Uh, plan our future releases to make sure that we don't overscope them. Uh, we also added the add to project integration from GitHub beta APIs. And that's all just within the KCP repo. We've got folks in this group who are working outside the repo on KCP things as well, uh, and specifically all the code generation pieces that are being worked on for controllers. So a big thank you to this group. That's a ton of work and not a lot of time. So I appreciate the, the effort that everyone is doing. Yeah, thank you. Really, really great to see the progress everybody's contributing and uh, the progress we make as a project. Which brings hell us, yeah. I think, go ahead. Bob. Just saying, hell yeah. It's awesome. Which brings us to the next topic. So 0 0.4 is not the end, obviously. So 0 0.5 is uh, starting every day, I think. And we have to talk about planning. I'm not sure, Andy, do you want to talk about that or Paul as well? Um, yeah, I, I just put that in there to make a note to make sure that we do figure out how we want to plan for 0 0.5. Um, I added a section in the work packages doc for 0 0.5, but it's empty. And we have 20 or 24 things already in the milestone for uh, in GitHub, which were largely there from before. Um, I would propose that we kick everything out of the milestone uh, that we definitely don't want to necessarily include and really try to be very careful with what we do put into the milestone. Um, so rather than being aggressive and saying, yeah, we, sh we should be able to get to that or it'd be nice to do that, let's only put the things in that we really plan on doing. And if there's spare time, we can pull more stuff in, but I'd rather pull stuff in than defer things. Yeah, even, even with this long list of things in 0 0.4 that Paul showed, there's major work, which is not ready to merge, but not far from it. So I think this will keep us busy for 
at least half of the milestones. So everything about virtual virtual workspace and advanced scheduling um, integration with the location API. So a couple of people, at least myself, David, Joachim, are busy with that. I'm not sure what the other big themes are, what people have. Possibly, possibly the API binding, virtual workspace as well, which is yeah. The, yeah, the depending on, on, the, on the previous stuff. I agree. Yeah. I mean, which is part of the overall picture of everything working together uh, with the new API management system, in fact. I would like to see discussions around API evolution, not necessarily implementation, but in P6, this will come, I think. We make, or we have to make progress there. So in the location API, we also use API bindings and exports, but it's pretty dumb at the moment. And we have to rethink this area. And this is the same for, for controller authors, API authors. Any other big topics? We did push the uh, controllers that point back to KCP versus tests and things. It'd be probably good to finish cleaning up those items. There's a there's an issue for missing end-to-end -end test. So we have service accounts, kind of. It worked in a demo, but in end-to-end, -end, at least Maru said it doesn't work. So somebody who's interested in that, so this is low-level pod spec mutation transformation. Yeah, I think somebody has to dive into that and try to find out what is missing and write an end to end test. This will be important when people build controllers, obviously. Any story about storage? Paul, Andy, can you comment? There also are some uh, discussions about storage use cases, and I can link the document on there. Um, it has really been mostly about refining what we would like to attempt and we haven't yet split any of those out into actual issues so this is a public document if, if folks are interested in the storage area i think what we really need to do is is figure out what is that very minimal here's a workload it actually has persistent storage does it run and if so uh, what are the mechanisms we need uh, to keep it running and possibly move so I can consume storage, it's pinned to a single cluster, and how does that integrate with the location and placement APIs that are currently being worked? So people start looking into storage. That's awesome, super important. Another big topic is placement. So those people who have worked in multi-cluster, I guess they will have ideas, many ideas, so API discussions should maybe also start in this area. I'm not sure we, we get to implementation, maybe the first basic things. So what's the plan for planning? Do we have this work, uh, work item doc, Andy, you mentioned that? Just the one from before, the work packages doc. Okay, so we need a new one for the demo scripts, basically, right? Um, we it, could, uh, as you mentioned to me yesterday, privately, Stefan, we, we haven't, you know, written any actual demo scripts. And I think that's fine. I think that it, it takes a lot of time to get them and open a PR and get them reviewed. I still think it's worth the time to do the demos. I think we can record them as YouTube or ASCII cinema or whatever. But I think that it's the sort of thing where they can be short, ideally. So pick a feature or a sub feature and record a, I don't know, one to five minute video for it. Um, and so that's the sort of thing that, yeah, it's still going to take some time to put together, but hopefully it won't feel like as much of a burden. Um, so I think having those stories is useful. Um, whether they need to be in a document or just in GitHub issues, I think can be pretty open. I would also like to see us keeping the doc 
writing down those user stories in demo script form. Sure. I agree. The value of the demo, which is committed to GitHub, is limited. And also, another topic, I mean, more and more people outside of the core team of this group of people here play with KCP, and we see more and more that they just take a random demo from somewhere, from a document or from GitHub, try to replay that. Obviously, it doesn't work because we are much further ahead already in APIs. So that's another point, I think. Committing demos, I'm not convinced. Mike has his hand up, I think. Yes, Mike. Yes. Um, so I wanted to say two things about demos. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what the solution is, but Stefan, I completely agree with how they're consumed. A common mode is, you know, I'm outside this group. I'd like to be able to just run a demo just to, to see that, you know, put the system through some particular scenario and, and, and understand what's going on, be able to stop at any point and probe in more detail. Um, also, for for the recordings, um, you know, I, I, I see... I hear I hate video. It's 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 usually too fast or too slow. It never runs at the pace that I want. I like to read rather than watch. In my preferred form of a recording is a text document with you know appropriate screen captures or text captures uh, to to show the important state. In the same direction, I would like to see blog posts like visible output outside great of yes a blog which, post which that just idea. runs through the scenario yeah. and ha has displays of the relevant state that you know to, to expose what's going on that would for me would be the preferred form of a uh, delivering a, a demo a recording yeah i'm happy to go that route as an alternative or both um, certainly recording a demo is time consuming and writing a blog post is time consuming too, but you don't have to get everything right on the first take. So yeah, we can do that. Question, what do we do with the old demo scripts in Contrib? Like people fall over them because they don't work anymore. I'd, I'd like to make sure that we have the user stories codified in E to E's that we maintain. like. You know, just make sure that we're not losing any coverage there and then delete them from the repo. And um, if there's certain things that we do want to keep up to date in terms of walkthroughs as documentation, like we, we can think about that. But I definitely don't want the demos to live on given that they break as soon as we make changes and we don't come back to them. And I think most demos we have as end-to-end, -end, more or less, already. So yeah, I think there should be maintained things that run, um, as well as blog posts or videos and or videos that capture things. So if there's maintained things that run, um, you know, maybe just somewhere, just you know, rather than a list of demo scripts that don't work, a list of pointers into E to E tests that people can read to understand uh, yeah, what the system idea. can do. I like that. Also, links on the front page to videos and media in general people can consume. Something low maintenance, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. Can somebody create an issue with those ideas? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And for planning, so I'm hearing we write the demo scripts again. Paul, would you, would you create a doc or reuse one? I'm not sure. Maybe a new okay. one. Thank you. Yep. And then we can start writing those this week, maybe, and have another talk next week. Any other topic around planning before we move on? All right, if there's none, I would move to the next topics. Again, if you have more topics for today, please add some.
Otherwise we move on in our reverse order here. So there was an ask for a logo for KCP. People start talking about KCP in the community, which is great. So having a demo which people can recognize would be very good, I think. And some people discussed it already inside of Red Hat and other Slack uh, discussions. And yeah, so what I would propose to yeah to to come to some conclusion to to have one document where we have discussions that we that we use this document here. It's just a slideshow where not a slideshow. It's a couple of slides. One basically one slide per per concept per logo, um, plus the front page where you have all of them. Those are the current designs. You see there's space for more. So if you have ideas, um, please put them here and make a copy of the template. And very important, start discussing. Like if you don't like a color, if you don't, if you think something is too similar to something else, please comment inside of the slides here. That's very welcome. So both negative and positive feedback. If you think they are all ugly, start your own and start discussion and uh, show how it can be done in a nicer way. Right? We can have a better logo, all fine. So there's space, please go ahead. Um, so it would be good probably if within a week or two, we could have some conclusion. Conclusion. What you will see in the discussions, I think if they, there's lots of discussion going on. Um, we will see, maybe, maybe we make it longer. We can decide next week. Yeah, I'll throw out there, this is um, part of like a larger effort, but this is just the, the beginning of it to get, uh, you know, web page up and all that kind of stuff that, you know, move some of this content um, in a more friendly place than GitHub for some audiences. Um, and so this is step one. Maybe we'll put the blog post we were talking about on there too. All right. So, any other topic for today before we go to the usual routine about issues? All right. So, let me click. I guess the uh, 04 milestone epic it's closed, so we have done everything. That's great. Andy, you moved everything else to 05 at the moment or to TBD? Yeah. A combination of the two. Okay. Um, and, and I, like I said earlier, I want to go through everything that's currently in 05 and make a hard decision if it belongs in 0 0.5 or TBD. All right. So those are some new ones. The one we just discussed, clean up demo script, that's obvious. Um, there's one ticket about PowerPC and not only an ask to do something, but to my understanding, the power team, I'm not sure, is this a Red Hat power, PowerPC team? Probably. They want to yeah. invest in making this compatible. Can anybody speak about that? So that's great. So yeah, we might I, see I think some, from a yeah. timing, I think from a timing perspective, this sounds great to to get it in, but um, for core functionality, it, it's not uh, not a priority compared to everything else. So I, I think putting it in the TBD milestone, and it can land when it lands, is probably. Um, the right thing to do here. That's the intent, I think. It's no ask for work, it's uh, offer for work. Yeah. So they want to open PRs like image building, I guess, fixing things which are not working, I don't know. So yeah, we might just move it to TBD, right? Yeah, so we don't have to come back and um, yeah. review it again. Makes sense. Yeah, we are fighting. Maybe Andy, you want to summarize our fights of the last 
space? Uh, yeah, the main one that we're dealing with is that the for some reason in our sinker test, the deployment that we're trying to get synced down to the workload cluster is not getting the label to schedule it to the workload cluster so it never gets synced and the test fails. Um, I've managed to reproduce it locally twice. Um, while I'm talking right now, I have an endless loop running to try and reproduce it again and can't. Um, Stefan and I and others have been adding doc, uh, not documentation, uh, extra debugging to our test fixtures and test code to try and track down what's going on. Um, we have also enabled it so that uh, admins for the repo, uh, so folks like Stefan and me, can uh, can merge pull requests if the shared server test is failing on this flake because we don't want to halt merge progress so that we are going to to be using some manual overrides until we can nail the source of this flake and get rid of it yeah so speak up when you when your pr is broken just by this i mean you see it how it looks like test end-to-end -end sinker and then something or deployment that's it speak up one of us can override uh, the test and merge prs that's fine and if anybody has interest to dig deeper here. Our suspicion is that there are several things because sometimes the deployment is even uh, synced, but it's not running. Um, so we will see. There are more things which might be broken. And we, on, on this route, we clean up stuff, which is also good. So if you have more time or time to an interest to look into that as well, please join us. Very welcome. And I, I put an urgent here, I think that's correct, right? Yeah. So formally, I'm not sure what we put here. It doesn't really matter. It's something we cannot wait with, so it's it's painful. Maybe um, also what's important here, we got kind support in end-to-end. -end, so we are running a kind cluster in parallel. So this is really deploying a real pod with busy box inside. So in the past, everything was fake. So we had a fake compute cluster, and now it's real. And maybe that's connected to why we see those issues. All right, this one is also not a new, I'm not sure, Andy, whether you look into that. I only saw that once. Um, I, if somebody's got spare time and wants to look into it, um, I'm fairly familiar with the test, but. Uh, would love to get more folks familiar with tests as well. Um, this one, I've only seen it once. We'll get around to fixing it, but um, it is there. It's not blocking us for sure. Not yet, at least. Another one, this is more often, I think. So I'm not sure uh, Paul mentioned that. We can finally delete workspaces, which is cool, really great. So um, before you could delete the workspace object, but every object inside was staying in the cluster and controllers got crazy about that because they saw a namespace, but the cluster workspace below was gone. So we got deletion, which is cool, but um, we also have a flake. So the controller falls over. I haven't uh, looked into that deeply. Maybe somebody else wants to. I wouldn't call it urgent, but um, it's important enough that we have to fix that, right? Pretty sure it's a flag rate of 10% or so, 5% in this region. All right, here's another one. Can anybody comment on that? Uh, yeah, this one, I, I think, um, was basically saying that if you delete a workload cluster from a workspace, they wanted it to get rid of everything related to having the sinker configured. Um, so I think we probably want to think about the UX here. I don't know if you want to do something that's like kube control, KCP workload, 
disable syncing or something like that and get it to uninstall because we create a, a service account and a secret and some RBAC resources in the workspace. And then you manually apply the syncer to your workload cluster. So that'll give you a namespace and service account and secret and deployment and some other stuff. So I think just thinking through the UX here would be useful. And um, you know, if if there's clarification that we need, we can ask what specifics uh, should be deleted. Yeah, there's a related discussion David and I had about what is actually the identity of a syncer. Is it the UID of the workload cluster, which I don't think it should be, and this is connected here. If you delete the object, then the identity would be gone, like then the syncer must go as well. And the question was whether maybe identity is something on top, similar to API exports. So you can delete the workload cluster, but the identity is stored somewhere else, and you can recover from the situation. In that case, you don't want to automatically delete syncers. There was also a related question around identity. What happens and if you spin up two copies of a syncer, or like what happens if you register two different workload clusters, but accidentally, for whatever reason, they are served by two copies of a syncer running on the same physical cluster? That's probably going to be a little strange, and we may need to try and find ways to prevent multiple sinkers with overlapping responsibilities from running on a single cluster. So we have to store something like a lease, sounds like. Maybe. maybe. I think maybe related to this for user experience is whenever you run the command on the CLI, if you forget to save the YAML, like to dump it into a file, it's not idempotent. You can just run it again. We have we have an issue capture for that. it, so yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, so how do but we I'm oh, sorry, I'm a bit uh, I'm a beginner here. Um a sinker is responsible for a number of resources, right? To sink a number of resources. And so you could have two sinkers responsible for two different resources. So the problem is to avoid that I see the two sinkers sink the same resources, right? Yeah, and I think part of that is where do we control what resources a sinker is responsible for syncing? Is that in the sinker deployment, which is how it's currently done? Or do we want to move that to configuration in the workload cluster or something? And that might yeah. help. Uh, so, sorry. Uh, uh, just go on. <laughs> Did not, don't, didn't want to stop you. I was done. Go ahead, David. Oh, sorry. <laughs> OK. I was about to say that that um, in the short, in the near future, with the virtual, you know, sync virtual workspace full picture, if I'm not mistaken, the sinker would not even have to, you know, know the resources it has to sync because on the endpoint that is dedicated to each uh, sinker, you would only get the 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 even the APIs that you have to sync. So, I mean, right, but that needs to be configured somewhere, and we don't have that right now. I yes, think exactly. This, so, the workload cluster spec is is a good place. Question is, who fills that? Who puts those resources there? But logically, the spec is the right place. The Synca would consume that, and the virtual workspace as well. Well, as David was saying, the Synca would just consume whatever's in the virtual workspace, right? Yeah, but it, it's not enough. It has to provide API schemas. So it has to know Okay. Yeah. beside, I think. Yeah. So it's something to sketch out. We have ideas. Yeah. We have to decide and prototype something. So that's one of those API discussions I would like to see in P5, at least a discussion. All right, so I, I moved it to enhancements. I think it's not technically a bug. Um, we know there is something missing, so it's an enhancement. 
and TBD, I would say, we need a story, obviously. It's not super critical to have it in P5. Yeah, well, and, and remember, we're going to be, we're going to set a high bar for what goes into <laughs> 0 yeah. 5 If somebody um, speaks up and wants to take such an epic, of course, we can move stuff into a milestone, but we need the person basically excited about the topic and wanting to drive it. All right. So this one we had already. I didn't skip any. No. That's our call. And here's another one. Another bug. Yeah. Um, so basically, if the sinker is configured to sync a variety of resources and it can't find whatever you've specified in the workspace in KCP. It just goes into an endless loop until it can, and there's no information reported to the user anywhere other than in the sinker's logs. Uh, I would rather try and find a way to, to get it up to the workload cluster status. Or something, but there, there needs to be some easily diagnosable reason why uh, syncing is not happening in this situation. Workload cluster status should be used, right? Yeah. Similar topic as the one before. Syncer plus workload cluster lifecycle we have to discuss. All right, I propose the same TBD. Which means everybody can pick it up, decide you want it, but it's not and in the master. Uh, Stefan, if you want, I can try to look at it. I saw we have this infinite loop, uh, wait dot infinite loop is done on the card. And I saw that there is, yes, there is a, a log, only a log for a time being. I yeah. can try to bubble up. To, uh, let's, let's maybe think afterwards. We have a couple of other similar topics so we should see which are most important but everything around okay. Stinker. so this one is also uh, such an issue it's more, but it, it it includes something about design i think api design so it's not immediate how to implement mm. it that's mm. why we need a discussion at first i think where we want to go tbd Synchro logs errors while trying to sync P cluster only resources to KCP. The same thing? This is different. So if you have, let's say you're syncing deployments and there's a deployment that is synced from KCP to the physical cluster, but then there's other deployments in the physical cluster that were there for whatever reason, the sinker is going to try and update the status in KCP and it's going to fail because it can't find it. So we need to only sync status back on resources that we know were synced from KCP in the first place. It's the famous yeah. config maps and secrets. Yep. And the, the log is full of those messages. That's a good one. Good first issue. Yeah, and that's quite strange. It it might even be fixed by the, the upcoming commits, you know, about advanced scheduling because uh, normally, when we sync something downstream, it should keep it would keep the the sync, the label. I mean the 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 cluster label. Mm -hmm. And so when we oh, we know what is yes when we watch uh, things from uh, on downstream, we would watch with the same label, and so only get to to sync back to upstream things that initially came from upstream through this level so yeah I mean, but there must be something like there that. must be two problems because i i see config maps which don't have status also yes yeah, that, that's updated. another problem which yeah. should also be i i think fixed uh, uh, at, the, at the same time okay. as the advanced scheduling but it's another problem is that we blindly were uh, updating status uh, even for objects that didn't have a status uh, field yeah. that's that was something else uh, I mean, just saying that because those two might might be possibly eventually fixed uh, in, in the upcoming comments. Can you comment on the issue? Yes, sure. 
or maybe I just assign it to you so nobody starts digging. But please comment um, for the status. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, just to be sure that there's no waste yeah. of time. I, I still put it in TBD, even if you saw if it's you and your Akim in the PR. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's just cosmetics, just cosmetics. It's ugly, but nothing breaks, I think. Yeah, so this one, we stopped updating the status field in the workload cluster for synced API resources when we got rid of push mode. And um, it kind of goes back to where are we going to configure things and do we want to get rid of this for now and bring it back later yeah. or do we want to actually fix it now? So it's not a good first issue, right? It's, it, it's a good design. first issue if you're just removing this field. If we're going to, okay. and right now this is a status field, not a spec field. Yeah, I mean, status also makes sense that you see how far it got, whether anything yeah. is missing. So it's like replicas and available, but here in the case, it's more about resources, but a similar thing. So I don't know, I, I put a comment in there just saying, do we want to manipulate this now? or spend some time to figure out what we want to do with configuring what's being synced. I think so later. Yeah. That's why I would remove good first issue. OK. And we know what you want, and we can label it again. Sounds good. Thanks. What does it mean, milestone-wise, no milestone? Yeah, TBD. TBD, OK. This one I saw PR and I think it's merged. Um, yeah, I mean, we just, it, there's the start of things. Um, I need to check one or two of those boxes off. This is gonna, uh, this is gonna patch most of the source code in uh, our Kubernetes fork and in KCP everywhere that we're using logical cluster as an identifier. So, we probably need to get to a point where either a whole bunch of people are going to prep for rebases once this lands, or we have people kind of pause working on things. We get this in, and then folks um, start working again. Because, like, I, I don't want to have to rebase again and again as commits are added to KCP to get this updated. And I don't want to make other people have to rebase a whole bunch of times. So I think we just need to figure out the timing here. So background is that we cannot import any cube library, right? So it's a yeah. pretty minimal package. That's what we found out. Otherwise, you get uh, cyclic dependencies. So it's just logical cluster, just the, the struct which we have already. That's why we want to move it under KCP dev logical cluster dot name. Somebody has other proposals. Um, we are open, but name looked like something super short. And we don't repeat the word logical cluster. I think we should try to do this in zero five, but it's it's not a requirement. Yeah. There's also the rebase, right? Yeah. I think I don't know. I mean, one twenty four is supposed to come out what kind of any day? Um, yeah. My my feeling is like we have an, a lot of integration epics, like integration around virtual workspace. So I'm not sure we want a rebase in the same moment. I kind of agree. Yeah. Fabian? Um, yeah, I was just wondering. So if this doesn't land in 0 05, would we just try to find um, another place for the current like client library work to go? Um, since that's sort of paused, since we can't add the Kubernetes imports to that repo. Uh, I think um, we should try to get this in. Um, yeah. So it's it's, one, more, it's more, it's place, right? It's not so much more and go format probably. Yeah. Um, so 124 is coming out in theory today, May 3rd. Um, I think if we wait to do the rebase in June, 
like after we get zero five out the door, like we're not missing out on anything new that's in 124 that I'm aware of if we wait a few weeks to do it. Yeah, there's just this detail everybody has noticed. Cluster name got renamed into something super ugly. Does anybody remember? ZZZ deprecated, don't use this cluster name or so. A super ugly identifier, which means Oh, and it also wiped, I think, in the storage, so we cannot use it anymore, which means we have to move to annotations. Yeah, I think now is a good time to try and do that, too. I mean, it, it's uh, not glorious work by any means, but it does future-proof us. Yeah. So if, if there's anybody who, who dares to touch our cube fork and replace the logical cluster type everywhere, I think this can be done any moment, right? There's no dependency. And I uh, think we don't have, do we have yeah. open PRs in cube? I don't think. In our cube? Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, Fabian's got the one for the customizable key funk that we're going to need for um, the informers. And the other ones, I think we need to review them. I mean, there's something that's been open for over a year. Everything else is a few months old. So we should spend some time and go back and look at them. Which means if, if somebody wants to do this, this, this can be done any day. A big PR changing, I don't know, 800 positions, code lines, replacing the type, updating imports, and then we have it. I'm also happy, that, I, I'm happy to do it, or I'm I'm happy to hop on Google Meet with somebody and walk through it. If um, you know, if there's anybody who's interested in seeing ways to uh, update our fork, I think that uh, it would be a good learning experience too. Sounds good. So, do we meet the bar for the O five? I think it needs to happen. I think it's important to have that in the clients because people start writing controllers and this is a breaking code change and they have a breaking change anyway because we get the scope clients so it would be good if we do it automatically for them Right. Uh, Semi-related quick question. Do we want to tag the logical cluster repo with anything? 0 0.1, 1.0? 1, 1. Um, we could go with one, so v1 basically, which pushes us into Semware, right? Which maybe yeah. we should do it now. I mean, we, we replace all the imports anyway, so let's do that. Well, and you don't need a V1. Like, V1 is kind of the default for 1.0. You just need a V2 if you go to 2.0. But V1, V1 is the one you see in the imports, or you don't see it? You wouldn't necessarily You wouldn't. See. Oh, I see, I see. V, V2 you see. So yeah. If you go there, OK, I see. But yes, tech. Tagging makes sense, right? Just do it. Okay. Um, yeah. If if folks want to take a look at the, um, I'm just gonna paste a link here to name.go. Basically, this is what we're proposing. Uh, tagging. Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah. Type as before, right? Just moved, renamed. Makes sense. Cool. All right, that's the last one, it seems. That's about push mode, right? Finalizing the API, removing the stuff we don't need anymore. Yes. 
so Dominic, maybe this is, this is a good one if you want to get your hands wet in code in code generation. That's a good one. Okay. It's probably completely yeah. unused, I hope. So mm. you can remove it from the API, regen the code. Okay, I will Hopefully try that's that. it. Okay, now assign it to me. Yeah. What's your nickname? IT. Oh, the, hmm? IT. IT. DOV. DOV. Oh, yeah. I, I don't find you here. Maybe just with yourself. Um, because Dominique. you're not yet in the project, probably. Ah, okay. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would see you here. Mm -hmm. Just assign yourself. 934. Okay. Yeah, the uh, GitHub org invitation is still pending. Yeah. So I put mm. it in TBD, but um, just do it whenever you have time. All right. So if I reload, there isn't much yet anymore. Clean up demo scripts. This is that's a meeting. And here's another one. Last minute. We still have 10 minutes time. Oh, that's you. Okay. All right, Hido, I see. Can you comment? Yes. Um, so I, I noticed if you create a true uh, workspace, uh, so if you want to, you are in one workspace and you would like to jump to another workspace, you have to pass by the parent and then come back to the lower level. I wonder if it would be nice if we can use the, uh, the syntax in the last command, kpcws use dot dot to jump to the parent and then go down to the other one. And I don't know if we foreseen to have also a later on the hierarchy of workspaces. But I think it's a good idea. I mean, I, I've certainly not particularly liked having to do dot dot and then use as two separate things mm -hmm. i'm in favor of improving the usability here and as far as i know it, uh, as far as i remember I, I also tried you know um just thinking that it would work and and finally i don't remember if it's with the slash or with the column but you went into a state where it's quite broken in fact you have to really come back to root to be able to find back your your stuff so i mean it, it it's just not only it doesn't work but but if you try to do that you know please uh, open an issue yeah then it, then it, it seems it's quite complicated but i agree this relative pass basically makes sense semantics is mostly clear there's one detail maybe it's not a problem. We have absolute pass, like everything which starts with, uh, with the root, root colon is absolute. Mm. Is what we mm -hmm. already support. Okay. Mm -hmm. So probably we can support the full relative pass syntax of file names, file path in Unix. Mm. I mean, not the full, but, but dot dot workspace dot dot something like that could support but for, that. For the time being, we have only one level of workspaces, right? No, no, no. no. We can have technically, a... that's a good good question. Technically, we have hierarchies. Um, mm -hmm. You have to allow them via workspace types. So basically, you need a workspace type which allows you the next level. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also a topic we will rethink probably in the next days, weeks. Um, but we have hierarchy. Technically, in KCP, it doesn't mean that every instance of KCP will allow every hierarchy. Mm -hmm. so it could be a service just allows two levels, three levels, whatever. Mm -hmm. But KCP, the so KCP kubectl plugin, could be generic. Okay. All right, I think nobody else created anything in the meanwhile, we are through the list. Do we have another topic to bring up uh, to bring up today?
If not, I think everybody gets nearly or uh, eight minutes in fact back. Thank you everybody and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye.